I'm Evany Nada, Charcuterie Director for Columbus Craft Meats, and I've been sharing my love of salumi with the world for over 15 years. I'm dedicated to making charcuterie fun for everyone. Former chef Carl Momberger and Jared Roberts of Big Jam took me to meet Jeff and Cheryl Bowden at West Union Gardens, a family farm that supplies fruit for their jam. We have enough character and depth and, and quality to our jams that are similar to a Pinot, a wine-like tasting. Especially with how deep your flavor is. Even on the waffle itself, it's perfect, I guess. Coming right off. Yeah. You still get that acidity. So much of a deep story to tell and like the berries alone over here. That breakfast was great though, thank you. That elf was awesome. We jam the fall raspberries because they're, in my opinion, deeper, richer, more of a fuller raspberry flavor okay. uh, than the summertime. The reason that you're having more flavor in the fall, though, is you have cool, cooler nights. When that temperature difference is, you have more sugars. Mm. Yeah, it's the same thing with, you know, fruits, apples, pears, that kind of stuff. When you have that cooler nights, warmer days, it brings the sugars out in them more. So the range of that is what makes it sweet? Yeah, okay. temperature. Oh yeah, look at these flowers. Yeah. One of the beauties with the house caps is that they'll take down to 25 degrees. Where a lot of, a lot of fruits and vegetables, frost, you're done. This morning was frosty. Yeah. <laughs> house caps, you, you don't barely ever hear it around anywhere. And, and when I, immediately when you try the jam itself, it just explodes with flavor. Right. It's just something so special. I, I wish more people knew about it. And, you said Haska really only grows here. West of the Cascades here up in, the, in Whatcom County, northern Washington, is just an area where it's easy to grow berries. Actually, for Columbus, that's why we started in San Francisco, North Beach area, uh -huh. in 1917, is because the climate, we would actually yeah. just dry age everything by opening the windows in the morning, let that fog creep in yeah. to acclimate the temperature to the perfect temperature needed to form the fiore on the outside of salami and just begin that whole fermentation process. Yeah. Where a lot of the origins are on all these mm -hmm beautiful products, it, it does matter, and there is reasons yeah. behind that story, which is, I think is always so cool to find out. I think seeing where all those beautiful flavors come from, I think that's so mm -hmm. special, and yeah. they, it creates an experience. Food doesn't sure. just come from the grocery store. Exactly, exactly. It doesn't come out of a plastic crate, it comes from here, so I think it, they need to see that. We do not use anonymous fruit, so we're not buying, like, commodity fruit from a from a, a where you know a, a reseller or something like that. Everything come we can lead you to the people that grew all the stuff and talk about their process with it all. And that, that's really important for me. We want to keep it local and keep it keep it family. It really it brings in so much more of the romance to the charcuterie board when you see all the berries grow sure. and you see all the fields and then you taste the flavor that's just encompassed in your jam is just so amazing. I think it, it's been a treat being out here man. Like really it's very memorable, so thank you. I really enjoy getting to know everyone behind the craft food we enjoy, including the farmers. Big Jam all started with a desire to preserve the taste of tay berries and turn it into something even more precious because it could last. So really, Carl, I saw the inspiration out in the fields of why you choose the crops and the berries and work with the people that you do now, when it comes to the jam itself, how, how did this all start for you? I was a chef for the better part of my adult life and always working with seasonality and, and, and wherever I lived, whatever was local and, and fresh and in season. Mm -hmm. And moving here to Oregon, I learned about the vast and wonderful world of the fruit that's grown here. And it all just lends so well to being preserved in time, and jam is the best way to do that. And it just was another avenue for my career to enter into, and it, it's been my favorite so far. Yeah, it's been a passion, really, in terms uh, of... Beyond that. Yeah. Yeah, it's become my being. Like, okay. Uh, being the jam man. Yeah. You know, and, and knowing in my peer group is that person. And really, the, the flavor of your jam, I think, is just special when you're talking about the flavor of the, the berries itself and how they pop in the jam. Sure. The, is it because of the little amount of ingredients that you're using, or? We start with a higher fruit to sugar ratio. Okay. So it's more of uh, condensing that flavor down 
uh, from the fruit itself. And mm -hmm. I tell you, the biggest part is a touch of salt. And it, it brings out the highs, it brings out the lows, uh, and you get the full spectrum of the fruit in these. Yeah, I think that's so true. And when you're talking about a charcuterie board on its own, like for us, having jams on the board is essential because we're really trying to elevate that meat and cheese relationship and just that little bit of sweetness. But you're saying with the personality, adding that little bit of salt, it just allows all those flavors to just explode. So. It sure does. And it, it's nice having jam with the charcuterie too, is it's just, it's also different levels of preservation. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's bringing back an old world style of, of, of taking care of what's around at the time to make it for something in the future to feed people, yeah. you know? I think the everyday user when building a charcuterie pairing, they know that like a brie or a soft cheese is great with jam as that kind of extra added a sweetness to just elevate the creaminess of the cheese. But what I wanted to do on this board is really kind of tie in together other cheeses that just go great with jam that some people don't really think of when you're talking about board pairing. Certainly. So semi-soft aged cheeses and then aged cheeses are I think are fantastic because it has a lot of saltiness and umami to it. But when you pair it with the jam, it just allows everything to shine. So let's start off by, uh, I love this currant jam and the black currants. For somebody that doesn't know what a currant tastes like, what, what would they be trying in terms of what currants? They are a, a berry that, that lends well to being processed. Yeah. So you find that they're rich, they're sweet, they're sour, they're herbaceous, they're, there's that juniper notes that come through the sinuses, like mm -hmm. they really transport well, like they have a lot of flavor packed into them and so yeah. they, they mirror really nice with this charcuterie. Yeah, so this is amazing. So what I'm going to do is I wanted to highlight, because it has its mm. qualities that are very similar to wines too, so having it with a Merlot like Belvatana with the aged cheese as well as like a Sopressata for us that complexity of the red pepper and sweet fennel just allows Absolutely. the currants to just shine and, it's got and that, the flavor combined. The currant has a, the tannins in it like a wine does, so it's pulling mm -hmm. all the moisture out of the backs here. Exactly. And, it's, it's, and then it replaces it with all that delicious herbaceous flour and it goes through the sinuses like I said. Yeah, totally. It pairs really well with Yeah, this. finish it up with one of these uh, dark chocolates with a little bit of berries on top. and we'll follow you around. And just continues to uh, mm -hmm go good together and when you're sipping a glass of wine too and now the hask of that's what we saw out there right? it is so correct the, in the fields and tell me a little bit more about the berry well it's the it's the fruit of the honeysuckle family uh and then like i said these were brought um from japan to here mm -hmm. hard to figure out what to do with them fresh but that acidity is what we want because you think you want ripe fruit for jam but overripe fruit is just all sugar. And I got sugar in spades. I don't yeah, need sugar. I want that acidity. I want the sharpness. I want the fruit. Because if it's all sugar, that's all that's going to come through. Yeah. So you want under ripened fruit, just like right on the edge of being ripe. And that works out the best for us. Yeah, I think that's so interesting because acidity is so important, especially in anything, but especially on a charcuterie board to cleanse the palate and allow yes. you to enjoy the meat and cheese. Acidity is Yes, essential. something to cut the fat. Exactly, kind of through the fat. And usually jams don't necessarily do that, but for yours, I feel like they really do because that flavor and that acidity just pops on it, when, especially when you're pairing it with like a meat and a cheese yes. like we are here. So yes. what I'm gonna do is I, I wanted to pair it with something that's a little bit milder to you, allow everything to shine on the house cap and get that acidity. You can see we keep a lot of whole fruit yeah, with this and, I, and I love that. Then we're just using like Italian dry that has that kind of little bit of tang to it. The tang really does marriage perfectly with like a sourdough bread, but for this purpose, it matches just right up there with the Haskap and allowing the acidity to just shine while enjoying it with that aged mimolette, that little nuttiness and the, the goodness in it just really does allow for that taper. It, it does, it really brings out the, the creaminess of that mimolette as well. I think a lot of people can find uh, charcuterie boards and, uh, to be intimidating to either build or to approach and eat. I mean, in the end, you're just putting meat and cheese on a piece of wood. Yeah. You know, and if you approach it from that point of view, it gets a lot easier. Like, it, really it doesn't does. need to be as complicated as this. I do agree with the intimidation factor of all the aesthetics on the board, all the beauty, but it really is simple when you're talking about the meat, cheese, acid, crunch combination. I think having some jams that are familiar, like a strawberry, but then having the black currant, the all these new things that people haven't tried. I think seeing that on the board and seeing the jar, and it makes you want to dive in.
But one other one I wanted to focus on is the Tayberry because that Tayberry is so damn good. And you were telling me about, like, really, that's one of your passion projects. This right is there. the one that got the business started. Um, yeah. oh, you just smell like the. Oh. It's the uh, so when I'm doing live tastings for people, every time I open it, I get these goosebumps and I get to show them. And it's just like people buy it, like, without even trying it at that yeah. point. You know what I mean? No, like, I love that. It's creating that autotomic, like, response for me mm -hmm. just on the smell alone. It's, you know, a. Blackberry raspberry hybrid, marriage of a okay. uh, Oregon blackberry and a Scottish raspberry. Yeah, because yeah, I've never even heard of this berry actually. No, it's, now. well, it's, it loses fruit structure quickly, meaning it falls apart, so it's not available commercially. For, and, for uh, good reason, and it is special. So I'm going to have this on a little bit of Gouda. So we're taking a Go Gouda, Midnight Moon, and then just allowing that sweet nuttiness, yeah, out of Arcadia, and just that flavor that it really just allows it to bring. And then finishing off with some buttery prosciutto, you can't go wrong with that and just allowing that fat cap to just mix with that sweetness. And for me, the sweetness on the jams, it, it allows everybody to dive into the board too. It invites Absolutely. people to really interact and grab a spoon, grab a knife and start spreading these things on. And, and there's a communal aspect to it as well. Oh, totally. You know, a very community on a charcuterie board. Cause I mean, if you're making this just for yourself, that's, a, that's an yeah, undertaking, a, you know? So you're wanting to be sharing this with people, and that's a, that's in itself is an act of love. Yep. You know what I mean? If you're pouring your love into the charcuterie board, as simple or as complex as you want to make it, you're showing an expression of yourself with it as well. Oh, totally. And the items that you're choosing to, to put on it are also an expression of yourself and, and your passions. It's one of my favorite places on earth. Yeah. Nothing makes me happier than a mid-June morning at like 5.30, the sun's just coming up over the mountains that way, and mm -hmm. picking the fruit, and eating them, and can't, filling my bucket. Yeah, that, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, it, it really is my idea of paradise. Yeah. It's, and I think it kind of translates through to the end. Oh yeah, totally. It's, it's like kid in the candy shop out it here. It sure yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, so dig in, please. Like, you gotta try all the fruits of your labor. And sure. Yeah. There's no wrong way to do it. Yeah, very inviting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good combo. Yeah. Tayberry with anything's a good combo. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this visit drew a lot of parallels for me between the charcuterie making process and how jam is created. I loved seeing where these beautiful flavors come from and talking about the importance of acidity and sweet on a charcuterie board. Carl's palate and his passion to preserve rare fruits like Hascap created a product that's truly unique because he found a way to share these special flavors through jam. <laughs>